This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2012. I'm joined by Frank Lee from LG Electronics. And, you know, 3D is clearly huge here at the LG exhibit. And we're going to go station to station to find out what LG has on display. Welcome to the program, Frank. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of 3D televisions here. Maybe you could tell us a bit about what LG has on display today. Well, we're really excited, Neil, because you know, we've been uh, playing with 3D for many years, and of course in the commercial display space. And you know, last year we came out with Cinema 3D, and you know, at that time it was the next generation of 3D. We continue to build on that you know, history and legacy. We've really come to a point where we've really tweaked and modified the 3D experience, so it really is an immersive experience that is comfortable. And what we've done is really just modified how the, uh, the algorithms and the engine behind the TVs are giving that precision and control and control to you, the user, through depth control, whether it's 2D to 3D conversion or 3D itself. Okay, so before we go into the depth control, there's, uh, you know, up, up until recently, the dominant technology in, in the television space were shutter glasses, and I take it uh, LG has decided to go a different route. Yes, as of last year, we made that shift because the two things. One, consumers, everyday people, my neighbors, myself, we were being exposed to cinema uh, 3D in the theaters. And that's where we had a little play on our technology, Cinema 3D. So the whole idea is we brought that cinematic experience into your home. That's important. And number two, we found that the overall experience of using passive technology was far more accurate and more precise. And again, the, when you look at the consumer, it's all about what the consumer is looking for and the experience. And as you and I know, Cinema 3D or 3D itself is the whole evolution of picture quality. And we feel that the passive route is the best way to take it. Excellent. Now, uh, on the topic of the TVs, you mentioned depth control. Uh, I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around it. So I know that uh, two things are very popular in 3D. There's 2D, 3D conversion, where you have traditional content that ex you know is converted to 3D, and then you could have native content. So let's say a game console with a 3D game or a PC with a 3D game. Right. Can you describe a bit what your depth control does, how it fits in with both scenarios? Yeah, oh, that's an excellent question, Neil, because uh, a lot of people are concerned about content, and there's more studios and and even uh, Hollywood, and they're coming out with more and more 3D content, but you can tap into your existing library of video games or movies because of the 2D to 3D conversion. At the same time, there's a lot of new native 3D content. LG overlays, whether you're gonna convert or you have native 3D, LG overlays that with its own additional algorithms, uh, uh, programs and software that allows you to modify that overall experience because, you know, I didn't know, but there's like a single percentage of the world can't actually see a 3D image because of either they've grown up with uh, uh, some deficiency in their vision or an injury. And so that really told us, oh, the 3D experience is a very personal one. So whether you're uh, going to play a game or watch uh, a, a theater or, or sports, you're able to go into presets that modify, enhance that 3D experience, or you can customize that experience through depth control. So all these uh, capabilities are available to you, whether you're converting from 2D to 3D or uh, 3D content in itself. So what I'm gathering is, let's say uh, you, you're playing a 3D game or a stereoscopic 3D game or watching a 3D movie, let's say it's a native film, if you're dissatisfied with the way that 3D is looking, uh, you could actually use uh, LG's additional tools through the TV to modify it, to get more fine tuning to your personal taste. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. You know, one way to look at it is, you know, you and I may go into a movie theater and you may prefer to sit closer up and I would love to sit further back. You know, we also start off with the midpoint and then we work from there. So, you know, LG presents to you the best 3D uh, experience initially and then you can go and modify. Do you want the, uh, the, depth, con the depth of the images more pronounced or do you want it to be more subtle? It might very vary. If you're playing a golf game, maybe you do want it to be a lot more richer, but you're playing a game like NHL, like a hockey game or a football game, you want to tone it down because there's a lot of action going on. And again, it's, it's, everyone's getting more attuned to it, having a fluency with 3D, but it's still a new experience for the larger uh, audience out there. Now, uh, one of the benefits of 3D technology is it 
it, it may serve more than one purpose because you can separate a left and right view. Has LG taken advantage of that technology in other ways beyond 3D? Yes, we have. Um, as you can imagine, playing a multiplayer game, two-player game on any console, you end up with a split-screen environment. And of course, you got one game console, one game, one TV. So obviously, it's a shared real estate. And that has led to situations of screen peaking. And you know, the, the, the couch becomes a very uh, intense environment because you're telling your brother or your friend, stop looking at my map. Well, with dual play, which is a new feature, we take advantage of Cinema 3D. And what that does, you can actually, player A's uh, screen, uh, the full image, is dedicated only to one player, and as player two, only to player two. And all, what happens in the box, you do get a, a different set of glasses that allows you to do that. Okay, great. Now, what about software compatibility? Does, do the game titles have to be specifically designed for this feature? The good news is no. Whether it's uh, any game console, any title can work this way. Because as you know, when you're into a split screen multiplayer environment, the console is feeding you two full images. It's just truncating the image to make it fit, whether it's top, down, bottom, left or right. So the complete field of view is available. It's just being truncated because you're sharing the screen. So we can take that full source and then popping through and so you can see that full screen right across. So there's no uh, requirement for the software developer or the studio to modify their, their, their games. Excellent. Now we're actually going to show footage of this so our, 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 our members could, could, could see what this is all about. But I understand you have an OLED screen on display. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about it. I'm really excited about this because we have the world's largest 3D OLED TV. Um, what's fantastic about it, it's only four millimeters thin and it's 55 inches large. Now, what is the, why, why is there such excitement around OLED TVs? I, I mean, what, what's so special about them? You know, I think we have to remember, we, we, we've gotten a little spoiled when it comes to flat panels. I, it was no more than, what, maybe five, five six years ago, uh, you know, the, 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 pan, the uh, flat panels came out to the market. And at that time, you know, a 42-inch plasma was like $40,000. We've become so accustomed to this now. There seems to be this desire for larger panels and thinner. There's some kind of, uh, I don't know, excitement when you talk about this, but on top of that, the OLED is a fantastic picture. Uh, we use a unique four-color pixel, and what that does is it, we have a dedicated white source. So picture quality is really contingent on contrast ratio. It's not the only thing, but it's a big contributor to picture quality. We can give you beautiful blacks, but we want to ensure we can provide natural whites. And by having a fourth uh, light source that's completely white, we're able to achieve that. Now, I understand that one of the benefits behind OLED technology is it's supposed to be a power saver as well. Can you elaborate a bit how that would work? Yeah, without getting too technical, it's an organic material. That's what the O is, right? Organic a light emitting diode. Now, again, I don't want to get too technical about it, but the great thing about this is that it's an organic material and it takes very little electricity to charge it. Right? And as a result, you actually have a panel that has quite high performance, but taking up less energy. Uh, in some uh, of our own studies, we're seeing anywhere from a 33 to 35% savings over LED and LCD. Now, I know one of the challenges with OLED technology is there could be a fading effect over time. Like, it will start off very bright and clear, and then uh, I've read is in a short period is like a year, it, it could fade. Now, I don't know if what you're showing is a prototype or a full release product, but are we seeing progress into how long the screen will last before it has this fading effect? Yeah, we haven't had gotten all our data back from our labs, but the one good thing, Neil, right now is everything in this booth is available for 2012, including the OLED. Right now, we're looking at about a mid-year launch. Um, a lot of buyers are coming through here, and that could change its availability as more and more orders are being received. Now, in regards to the, the screen quality or the, the life of the panel, right now, because we have this four pixel uh, configuration, uh, and also the way we, con we construct it, we have a very unique way of doing it. It's only three layers with a substrate, and this has not only allowed us to reduce the cost of manufacturing, but also being able to extend the life of the performance of that picture. Um, and when we get more details from our labs, I'll be able to share with you how we do this. But right now, we are ready to go into mass production with this unit. In your opinion, do you see it as a long-term durability compared to the other panels in the market? You know that if we let's let's look at our legacy, our history of, in our in our TV display uh, for LG, whether it was the, the CRTs or the plasmas or the LCD and LED, we've always we've required about 
about it, but we've always been pushing to have longevity when it comes to our products. So you're looking at a half-life uh, in, in those categories of almost 20, 25 years before you see any material degradation in the picture quality. It, it is, there's no reason to believe we would not continue that commitment when it comes to the life and, and the durability of the panel. Excellent. Now, uh, just one more question for you. Actually, a two-part question. Uh, can you, you know, this year for 2012, can you give us a size range of the TVs that that we could expect? 3D compliant TVs with your your flame, the, the polarized technology, and what price range can we look at? Well, again, really exciting. I mean, there is. Well, consumers are telling us they want bigger. <laughs> So you're going from 47, uh, there are some at 42, but really the, it really starts at 47 all the way up to 85 inches when it comes to 3D. So Cinema 3D will be available across those sizes as well as our smart capabilities. And price ranges, you're looking at probably, well, let's take out the 85 inch right now because that's sort of an outliner right now. But you know, in our sort of 55, 57, 60 inches, you're probably looking at a introductory price about 35, 4,000, depending on the feature set, all the way down to about you know 1500 um, but the, the beauty of the electronics world is that upon launch and then as the days go by you're gonna just see the price uh, come down to more and more reasonable uh, values as more and more consumers and as the demand grows now one of the leading uh, critiques of 3D is it used to be that there was a huge premium attached to it like if you're gonna get a 3D television it was very expensive compared to getting a traditional 2D television. Have things changed in that area? Oh yeah, even if you look last year, there wasn't that much of a delta. And a lot of consumers were ending up buying a 3D TV uh, without even uh, noticing that there was a, 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 it was such a marginal difference. This year again, the bulk, the bulk of the TVs are also smart and 3D, and you're not, people are not noticing the difference. You're looking at a 55-inch TV uh, between $1,500 to $2,200, depending on the feature set. Uh, uh, that, that is not going to cause any sort of, ooh, I got to look at my budget. I mean, right now, we've sort of come to a point where that's what we expect prices to be at right now. And actually, one more question for you in relation to content. That's the other issue with 3D. People say, hey, there's not enough content. Look, great looking TV, but what am I going to do with it? Has Have things changed in that area too? Yeah, again, you look across the global market, various regions have done uh, really improved in terms of the content being available. Uh, some regions around the world, they have already have two or three 24-hour sources of 3D content. We see amazing things happening in North America, and that continues to happen. Uh, I think what's incredible is that there's a growing fluency, not just with TV broadcast, Casters, but the creative community and people are doing a lot of experiments. Look at yourselves. You have really are a pioneer and setting sort of uh, the tone and you know the need for it. We have uh, a former uh, Canadian himself, James Cameron, really pushing the need for greater investment and the development amongst his peers. I think we're going to see that really materialize in an exponential rate starting with this year as well. Excellent. Oh, well, we're going to speak with you a bit more, but uh, we've been speaking with Frank Lee from LG Electronics, and of course, we'll be back with more from CES 2012. Uh, this is Neil Schneider.